Hey, baby, looking for a little adventure? You bet your sweet ass I am. I've been a bad, bad girl today, Way. I may need to be disciplined. Funny you say that, because I have a way of dealing with naughty girls like you. I know how you like it rough, you naughty little tart. Well, it's been quite some time since I dabbled in the realm of video game reviewing, and having played a handful of recent releases that I'm eager to share my thoughts on, I feel that now is as good a time as any to start getting back into it. Sleeping Dogs has had a tough run. Originally planned to be the next entry in the true crime series, True Crime Hong Kong, it was dropped by publisher Activision and spent quite some time in purgatory until Square Enix, obviously seeing potential, came along and bought the unfinished product from Activision, handed it over to developer United Front Games, and released the finished product in mid-August under the new title of Sleeping Dogs. Was it all worth it? Or should have Sleeping Dogs been left in limbo? Let's find out. Yeah, alright, come the fuck on! The story in Sleeping Dogs follows protagonist Wei Shen, an undercover cop in Hong Kong tasked with bringing down a well-known triad organization known as the Sun on Yi from the inside out. What transpires is your typical undercover cop storyline that many would have more than likely already seen in movies. However, that's not saying that the story is bad. In fact, it's quite the contrary. I actually really enjoyed the story throughout Sleeping Dogs. Being undercover, Shen is forced to continually juggle his loyalties between both his law enforcement and triad comrades, and his growing struggle to do so is conveyed exceptionally well throughout the game, with Shen becoming noticeably more stressed and frantic as he goes deeper into cover, and as a player, you'll likely find yourself beginning to question where Wei's loyalties lie as the game progresses and the plot thickens, which certainly creates more than enough suspense to keep you playing, especially in the later stages of the game. Hey! You! You can't do this here! It's a fucking funeral! Goddamn police! Why don't you show some fucking respect? Huh? The characters that present themselves either once or repeatedly throughout the narrative are utilised very well, and their interactions with Wei Shen and occasionally one another significantly add to the depth of the story, by forming some very interesting relationships that players will likely want to keep track of and see where things end up. However, sadly, some of these intriguing relationships get to a point where they're pretty much dropped with no further development. The relationship between Shen and Triad Thug Conroy is one such example of what I believe is a squandered opportunity. Additionally, I also found that often there were quite a lot of characters to keep track of, which at times felt like too many. There were a few occasions in which absent characters were mentioned by name within conversations between other characters and I had no idea who the fuck they were, despite having been introduced to them previously. So if you're not very good at remembering names, you may be needing a pen and paper. Overall, despite those relatively minor issues, the story throughout Sleeping Dogs is well above average, and although it doesn't stray too far from what we may have already seen in the past, it still manages to maintain player interest and supports the gameplay rather well. Sleeping Dogs is an open-world sandbox game similar to the likes of Grand Theft Auto and Saints Row. And as such, players are given a large and densely populated world to explore and pretty much use as their own personal playground. The main quests that players will embark on involve performing various duties both for and with Shen's fellow tribe members, which will have players fighting, driving, running and shooting their way throughout Hong Kong in a series of entertaining and most importantly, varied missions which actually remain fresh and enjoyable as opposed to becoming repetitive and dull as the game progresses. On the flip side, Shen will also aid law enforcement authorities in solving numerous cases throughout Hong Kong, with each case requiring a different approach to solve. These police missions served well as a nice change of pace from the usually far more aggressive triad missions, however, as a whole, they also felt a lot more dull, slow, and ultimately harder to really get into. That's not to say that every one of the triad missions was pure gaming genius either, with some missions just being downright boring such as the ones requiring you to take part in half-baked karaoke mini-games, or one mission in particular that had Shen playing the role of chauffeur and errand boy for his triad superior's fiance. Relevant to the story, I know, but still boring as batshit. You want this cake? You're going to have to pry for my dead fingers, you hear? As well as police cases and triad quests, there are also numerous side missions and other activities located all throughout Hong Kong that players can take part in. The available side missions are predominantly in the form of favours that Wei can perform for various civilians and fellow tribe members around the city, and the types of favours required are quite varied to begin with and will therefore tack on a few extra hours of playtime in the earlier stages of the game. 
They did, however, soon begin to repeat themselves, and as soon as I got that been there, done that feeling, I chose to simply ignore them in lieu of undergoing the more primary quests. When simply exploring their way through the large city of Hong Kong, players will be able to undertake various minigames or activities separate from the main and side missions. Players can visit fighting dojos to hone and learn new combat skills in exchange for jade statues scattered all over the city. They can take part in various fight clubs around town to challenge themselves in combat and make a little money. Or they can spend their free time beating the shit out of and mindlessly murdering innocent civilians, which, let's be honest, is what one usually does in an open world game such as this. Other mini-games and activities include hacking various devices, lockpicking, safe cracking, mahjong poker and more, but many of these are also featured in the primary quests from time to time, and as they never vary too much in style or difficulty, you'll likely find little time for them outside of the triad and police missions. Performing the various missions throughout the game yields experience which is put towards both a triad and cop leveling system. Leveling up yields upgrades that improve Shen's abilities across a number of areas, learning useful tricks of the trade for both a gangster and a police officer. The several different upgrades available are often extremely useful to have at your disposal, and will make players feel like more of a badass. Completing the aforementioned side missions fills what is known as Shen's face meter, and again, as his face level increases, a variety of useful upgrades are made available for use, such as having your very own personal car valet deliver a car to your location whenever you require one. Having a higher face level also allows Shen to purchase better looking clothing items and vehicles. However, many of the sharper looking clothing and faster vehicles require a relatively high face level in order to buy. The problem here is that your face meter gains experience at a snail's pace, and that, combined with the repetitive nature of the side missions that need to be undertaken in order to accumulate said experience, creates a long, boring grind that most players, myself included, will hardly bother with ultimately limiting customization options, rewarding only the most dedicated players. I don't see how you can fail to buy that. Well, lady, it's because my face level isn't high enough yet. Please, don't come again. Oh, don't you worry. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. The combat throughout Sleeping Dogs works extremely well. Shen is quite the martial artist, and this fact is strongly emphasized by the game as it looks and feels awesome. The fighting is comprised of chaining together both light and heavy attacks, playing out on screen as very impressive and painful looking jabs and kicks. And to prevent it from becoming too much of a button masher, players are also able to counter incoming enemy attacks by correctly pressing the appropriate button when the time arises, similar to the likes of Rocksteady's recent Batman outings. Enemy variety is also incorporated to add varying levels of challenge to the hand-to-hand -hand combat. Enemy grapplers, enemies that are immune to certain attacks, as well as your standard thugs are all combined at once to force players to adopt and switch between strategies on the fly, keeping things from becoming too easy and stale. With a weapon in hand, Wei fares equally as well as he does in hand-to-hand -hand combat thanks to a basic but effective cover system and max pain-inspired bullet time that slows time as Wei vaults over cover, allowing for some very cool-looking slow-mo kills. <laughs> firearm feels very powerful to wield, and although they are much scarcer in Sleeping Dogs than they are in other similar open world games, it's fair to say that often, when a weapon is required, the right tool for the job is always close at hand. When it comes to getting around in Hong Kong, driving from point A to point B is a lot of fun due to the game's plethora of vehicles, many of which feature great speed and terrific handling, and this arcade style of being behind the wheel makes driving at breakneck speeds, weaving in and out of traffic, and taking sharp corners like a pro an absolute joy. The sheer fun of the driving takes a lot of the boredom out of travelling to your next objective and also makes taking part in the several available street races throughout Hong Kong a lot more appealing. Throw in the ability to slam aggressively into other cars with the push of a button causing them to lose control and crash and burn, the ability to exit your vehicle and hijack another at speed anytime you wish, and the ability to shoot at enemy vehicles whilst speeding down a highway with the help of that aforementioned bullet time making the resulting vehicle flips and fiery explosions look a hell of a lot more spectacular and you have a driving system that delivers on so many levels. Ah! 
However, one issue that I did experience with getting around was that the game's waypoint navigation system could at times be sporadic and unhelpful, taking too long to update if I happened to change course, taking me in one direction and then suddenly changing its mind, forcing me to waste time backtracking, and it at times even seemed to be giving me needlessly long and complicated routes to relatively close and otherwise easy to get to locations. With this in mind, thankfully fast travel is also available in the form of taxis, which for a price will take you directly to where you want to go regardless of distance, taking a large chunk out of travel time. Just be careful not to release that enter vehicle button too quickly. <laughs> Shen is also rather agile on his feet, being able to effortlessly vault up and over obstacles and leap from heights while sprinting in a somewhat parkour style platforming system. This platforming system also requires players to press the action button at the correct timing in order to effectively clear said obstacles and jumps at speed, keeping the player involved in the action as opposed to mindlessly holding down a button and watching the on-screen character move on autopilot. Although the visuals in Sleeping Dogs aren't its strongest asset, they still do more than enough to get the job done. The fictionally created geography of Hong Kong feels alive, featuring very nice day, night and weather effects, and is brimming with colour and atmosphere. The game also featured solid in-game animation which showcased the combat very well, and the frame rate remained consistent throughout the experience. In contrast, however, character animations during cutscenes looked very artificial and unnatural, up close the character models looked like plastic, and I noticed that there were a lot of identical civilians and gangsters throughout Hong Kong. The sound presentation throughout Sleeping Dogs was quite good overall, featuring a well put together soundtrack that, although not memorable, still always managed to accompany the on-screen events well, very satisfyingly powerful weapon and combat sound effects, and fantastic voice acting across the board that made each and every cutscene more than watchable despite the aforementioned unnatural animation. To summarise, Sleeping Dogs is a very solid and enjoyable open world undercover cop drama delivering a decent story, great accompanying gameplay, and a presentation that holds up reasonably well, it baffles me that Activision actually dropped this game. Sleeping Dogs, a game that nearly never saw the light of day, is definitely worthy of your time. Put simply, I wouldn't let Sleeping Dogs lie. That's right, I said that. <laughs>